to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't want to like this character. Farrakhan and the Fat. I don't know why, but he, 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 I just didn't like him. I don't. I think it's the way he looked. I don't know what it is. Hey, hey. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Burrito hates fat people. No, I don't. Guys, look at me. I'm chonky. Look at me. I'm not exactly Henry Cavill or freaking Thor. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just, it's just his face. He just got a stank face. You don't like it. I thought he was bald this whole time too, but nah. He's uh, chained up in the back. Let's go over his kit. And we'll talk about why he is actually one of my favorite ally attack champions that can provide a lot to you as a player if you are a newer player or even in the end game because even as an end gamer i still use Farrak and the fat attacks one enemy has a 40 percent chance books up to a 50 percent chance of placing a big version of decreased defense for two turns his a2 attacks one enemy with a 100 percent chance of placing hp burns and two poisons on a three turn cooldown and then this is his move, his calling card, the beatdown. Places increased crit rate and increased crit damage on all allies except this champion for three turns. Then all allies except this champion will attack one target enemy. So there it is, a four turn cooldown for an ally attack. And then his passive, which I don't necessarily care for, and probably part of the reason as to why I did not like him, because he deflects 20% of all incoming damage and he spreads it out to his friends, to his allies. I don't think that's something that I particularly liked. It seemed like a selfish passive to have, <laughs> but uh, um, body block. Yeah, that's his passive. He's an attack-based champion. Like I said, guys, if you do pull him, he's honestly a really good champion. I, I can't knock it. In fact, one of the places that I use him in, the most predominant place that I use him in is my Fire Knight team, because I use a double ally attack team and I tackle the Hard Fire Knight. Now, I haven't gotten exactly to stage 10 of the Hard Fire Knight. I just don't have the gear or the champions yet to do that, but I can reliably do stage six. And we're gonna go ahead and just run one for you guys so you can see. Of course, we have Cardiel going in with the ally attack and we have Nut, who's gonna be our main source of damage. We have Stag Knight, who is also a huge epic champion, a godly epic champion one that I would be really happy about pulling on my free-to-play account. And then, of course, we have Farrakh and the Fat do doing his ally attack, placing the increased crit rate and crit damage. Cardio does that too, but... Wait, did he do it this time? I don't think Farrakhan did it that time. I can't remember. But, yeah, he smacks pretty hard, you can see there. He was doing 55 on that A1. And then for his A2, you see all of those poisons as well as the hp burns going up and nut's gonna counter attack here nut is such a huge champion there you go 77 basically 78 with the a1 and the body block passive is there to help him stay alive i guess he is kind of squishy he is an attack based champion not exactly the tankiest champion out here but what he does provide he provides a lot of it here we are at the Hard Fire Knight. And so, using ally attack is one way to get the shield down as quickly as possible. And then Farrakh and the Fat is going to go ahead and do his ally attack ability. And that's how we get the shield down. And then Nut is going to use his freeze ability to push the turn meter back. And the entire run just goes this way. But yeah, having him as an ally attacker is absolutely huge if you don't have any ally attackers. There are other ally attackers in the game that are rel relatively accessible. Like, I think there is Crusader, who is an uncommon, not exactly the most reliable ally attacker. I think it's random, and I'm not a fan of random, but he is an ally attacker. Hyria is another ally attack champion, not my favorite, a rare champion, High Elf. But yeah, Farrakhan the Fat is somebody you should be proud and happy to pull and if you do pull him he is worth bringing to 60 because as you can see i'm using him myself the hp burns and the poisons are another big thing the other place that i have used ferric in the fat was early on in hydra if i can find the video i'll show it to you guys actually you know what i can find it one second 
Here it is, one of my older videos where I actually put together a Hydra team on normal using only epics as sort of a mini challenge. And I actually use Ferric and the Fat here as an ally attacker. This is the Blender style team. Uh, this was like three months ago. But using Sinesha and Skull Crown together, we were able to do quite a bit of damage. As you can see here, Ferric and the Fat was here as an ally attack champion doing increased crit damage was another thing so he's a strong support champion that enables other champions to do big amounts of damage as well as being a damage dealer in his own right i mean look at that almost six million he's doing more than Sinesha, who has aoe's on her a1 as well as skull crown he's doing a little bit under skull crown you know watching this i can see why this video didn't do too well I'm just all over the place with it. Like, it keeps snapping all over the place, and I don't particularly like that. But yeah, he, he's an awesome champion if you want to use him in... Oh my god, this is just annoying. You do not have to have him in a swift parry set, but for the purposes of Hard Fire Knight, I just, at the time when this was built, I needed speeds and extra crit damage, and you know I'll show you that in a bit, but this, this just helped me get there because... The Swift Parry set gives extra 18% for speed and then extra crit damage. So here are the pieces of gear because I know some of you guys like to see the pieces of gear. Focusing mostly on doing attack and pumping out speed. Those are the priority stats. We have crit damage here. Let me show you guys the masteries. As always, my friends, do not blindly copy masteries. But go ahead and feel free to copy these masteries. Thank you for 776 subs. I'm nearly there and I'm going to get into the content creator program for Raid. Going down here for War Master to inflict bonus damage. And we're taking Life Drinker so that we can heal up. Since he is going to be a little bit squishy. We're taking Lasting Gifts so that we can extend the buffs that he places on everybody. Taking Cycle of Magic so that we can use his A3 a little bit more often whenever it does cycle through. Extra stats. And then we're taking Master Hexer so that the decreased defense, the HP burns, and the poisons do stay up a little bit longer. Looking at the total stats, we have him low HP. Again, we're focusing mainly on attacks, so we have him under 5k, 280 speed. We do have him at over 100% crit rate, and we do have him near 250% for crit damage. As you can see, he does exceptionally well all around the raid landscape. If you want to use him in the clan boss, you can use him in clan boss. He's excellent for faction wars, dragon, fire knight, obviously. Arena, he can make a good ally attack champion for arena. Minotaur, force keep, basically just, just everywhere. And the other thing is we have Rathalos here. Now, Ferric and the Fat does place HP burns, and Rathalos does benefit from having somebody place HP burns. I think he does like extra damage and receives less damage whenever there's an HP burn up. Okay, so here we have the increase attack and we're going to just smack doing 77 over here. Let's save the A2 for the next stage. We're doing 60, 30 right there. Poke him, 132, 50. Decrease defense and weaken. We have been resisted. Again, Ferric and the Fat is not built with accuracy, so if you want to rely on his HP burns and his decreased defense and his poisons, you're going to want to put accuracy on him. But I just didn't. He's able to enable all this extra damage, so it's pretty nice to see that, except for the resists. Definitely somebody to help you clear through the dungeons if you ever pull him. There's that. Uh, not, not the best team, not optimized, but you know there's there's that you guys get the point and in arena if you wanted to you could use ferric and the fat to do extra damage so something you could do is like increase attack and then place the decrease defense and the weaken and then have ferric and the fat you he's paired with cupidus who is a nuker and you just do this and you'll have your aoe nuker swipe through so this actually used to be one of my old arena speed farming teams except i wasn't using ferric and the fat i was using catacomb counselor who was another ally attack champion but the fat man can do it just as well i don't think i'll take you into arena using this blender comp because senesha isn't built senesha is built except for that so as you can see 
uh, large chunks of the opposition are being taken away from us and usually th this is how most of my fights would go except um, they'd be dead usually already. But the times have changed and that's part of why people don't really run blender teams anymore. I think if you were in gold arena like level four and below you could probably do well with this but but uh this is this isn't the meta anymore so i don't recommend doing blender teams in arena unless you're like gold four and below yeah no there's just too many ways around it all right here and then you just go in and swipe the entire team There you go. But like I said, times are different. Uh, Blender teams are no longer the meta. There's just too many ways to counter them. So, and, and you have to rely on being the fastest one, so. But hey, did you know that Neldor Rizblade is another epic champion that you should max out because he's exceptionally good at doing hard fire night? Check this video out.